Hey, this is Wolf from Armory Train, and today I'm being joined by Jim here of Doing Stuff. He's got a really cool channel where he makes all sorts of things, such as you name it. Yeah, his current projects are working on firefighting equipment. Anyway, he's joining me for this two-part video because we're going to turn some HDP plastic, you know, the stuff that milk bottles and bottle tops are made out of. And we're going to try and make something useful. So today we're going to hopefully melt some down and fill up some cans. And then in the second part of the video, Jim's going to try and turn them into something useful. Now HDP plastic's a great thing. Melts in the oven at about 230 degrees, which is just what you want to do on a hot sweaty day like today. Put the oven on. Um, it'll also melt in a toaster a sandwich press. This is what happens when you don't quite put enough in. This is a mixture of bottle caps and milk bottles. So it's speckledy. Very, very speckledy. Now, with this stuff, if you just stick it in the oven, you can form billets that, as they cool, get all sorts of wrinkles and weird stuff. But I just cut this one in half on the bandsaw, and as you can see, it's relatively dense inside. So as we push it into the cans, we should be able to get a nice homogenous type plastic. So we have some milk bottles cut up that we're going to attempt to use a paper shredder on and shred. And by hand, I also made a whole lot of little pieces with scissors. Just so much fun. Just sitting there, hour after hour, cutting up milk bottles. You do indeed. So anyway, anyway, pull that shredder and we'll see if it works. And then in addition to the milk bottles, we also are going to use soft drink bottle caps to see if we can make stuff that's not white. Okay, let's see if any of this will actually go through. Here's hoping. Woohoo! Let's pull this just a little bit further in the frame. Yep. Shred away, my friend, shred away. Now, to compress it into the tins, Jim's created these wooden plugs using a hole saw. So, they're the right size for the tin, and we'll press it in, and hopefully we'll get a usable billet of plastic. So, once we get this chopped up, we'll open it up and have a look at it, and then it's to the oven. On the plus side, the oven is in an air-conditioned room, so that'll make life more bearable. Got more flatbeds? Oh, that's pretty much all of them. Let's see how it looks. Now for the drum roll. Drum please. roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe we still well, need to put scissors. I think we still need scissors. <laughs> so we've retreated into the air conditioned room and we've chopped up a lot more of the plastic and put a little bit of baking paper in a metal tray. The oven's been on for a couple of minutes at 230 degrees. Is that enough here? Uh, a little bit more than this. Yep. Yep, we're just making sure we're fishing out any of the plastic that's got too much ink on it or is overly discoloured. Yeah. Because for this one, we want a nice white piece. So, you know, now stick enough? this in the oven. Yeah, to start with. Okay. Stick this in the oven and then once it's hot, we'll pull it out and we'll play with it for a bit to compress it more. Then stick it back in the oven and then start fitting it into the can. Okay, our second attempt at pulling plastic out of the oven. We haven't left this quite as long, so we'll see how this one goes. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. One was quite hot enough. But we can try. Yep. Let's roll it together and see if we can press it in a little bit into a sausage type shape. Yay! When we don't burn the paper, it falls a lot better. Now, you shouldn't burn yourself through those gloves rolling that in your hand as long as you're not leaving it stuck for too long at a time. So, compress it together a bit. Yep, just like that. Pressing all the air out of it that we can. Oh, let's get it a bit hot now. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, well, back in the oven. Now we stick it back into the oven and we heat that up again and then hopefully we can compress it into one of these tins. Okay, this billet's been in the oven for another 10 minutes or so. Uh, it's looking nice and melty. That'll be warm, that will. Yeah. I will do that. Yeah, funny that. Yeah. yeah, let me shut that oven and keep the air conditioned room nice and cool. So, let's dump that back on the chopping board. Now, what you really want to do is fold that in half lengthways to get it into a shorter piece. So when we put it into the can, we're not trying to make it spread out as far. That's that looking? That's looking pretty good. Uh, give it a bit of a squeeze. Yep, let's drop it into the can. Put the plug on top and let's clamp this down and see how much of it we can get happening. Let's put the other plug on top. And this is only the first attempt in the can. We have plenty of plastic left over to keep trying. So we'll see how this goes. So let's tape it down till it's nice and tight. So that can should be warming up nicely about now. Oh, it is. It's not going real straight. But... Ah, that's all right. You can cut the end off on a bandsaw. Oh, yeah. Oh. Okay, so we've learned that um, it doesn't. It does like pressure quite a lot. Maybe what we need to do is put two clamps on it, one on either side. We could probably do that. Here, good thing that you brought two clamps with you. Thank you. Hey, that's all right. We're learning as we go. We haven't set anything on fire yet, <laughs> or have any burns that have blistered, so we're doing well. Yeah, that may not let me do that. Yeah. We can only do what we can do. Uh, it looks like it's still compressing in there fairly well. This video is not sponsored by Dettol or Palmolive or even the dog food brand. They just happen to be in the background. But please, do use things like that to feed your dog and clean your kitchen. I think we've got it off. Excellent. We'll let that cool down for a couple of minutes while we melt some other plastic. And then we'll pull it out and have a look at it and see what sort of disaster we have. Okay, so we unclamped this and we've let it cool for a little bit and now we're going to try and get it out of the tin. Problem is, the tin has ridges and the plastic's been pressed into the ridges. So what we're hoping is that we can get it out without cutting the bottom of the tin off and pushing it through. Because that's how I've done it in the past. Loose. Loose is good. This is looking pretty much like a usable piece. That's a nice billet. Uh, yeah. How's the heat on it at the moment? Like it's had probably 20, 25 minutes out of the oven. Still got good warmth. In Still it. warm? Yeah. Yeah. Probably too hot for without a glove. Yeah. That's all right. It can sit and cool in the air for a while. We've put in another lot of plastic, but this time we've laid some orange ball tops across the top. So hopefully we'll get a nice orange stripe. The main billet is the uh, milk bottle and then the orange caps of some mango Pepsi Max. Remember Pepsi Max? I work for cheap. Please sponsor me. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to try and roll this together a bit, which is super hot. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
And then hopefully, yeah, use a paper. Uh oh, paper rip. Oh well, that's very very hot. Okay, so all we do is we flip it out onto the timber, off the paper. We let it cool for you know a couple of seconds, and you know brush the gloves off to get the heat off them. Not that that works, but hey, we'll brush them. It anyway. looks good. It does. It looks, it looks like I'm doing something. Oh, we've actually made a hot dog. Hey! How about that? <laughs> Orange. It's a hot giant dog. hot dog. Okay, let's see if we can twist this thing. Oh. Yep, plenty hot. Oh. Got a bit more of that rubbing. Now what we're aiming at here is when we turn it into something, we should get a spiral effect, maybe, out of the orange. Maybe. And if we don't, we'll just have random orange bits. Yes. I think that's as far as it's going to work for us. Mm -hmm. Without burning my hands. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to suggest grabbing that other piece of timber and putting it on top and just pressing downwards because that should take most of the tension out of the twist by changing the direction of compression because it was trying to untwist which we didn't want it to do okay it's definitely not untwisting now so let's stick it back into the oven to heat it up and then we'll stick it in this can and see how much of it will fit in the can okay we've heated the billet up again and now we're going to try and pull it out. Wow, that's a big bit of more than plastic. <laughs> Hopefully we've got enough room in the can. I reckon we might be overfilling this can a little bit. I'm thinking we've got probably twice what we <laughs> need there. I'm thinking we should cut that first before we try and put it in the can. Just flip it over move the paper out of the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's cut that first. What do you reckon? After deciding that the center was just too hard to cut, we moved it a bit. So we now have a lump of molten plastic, which we're going to stick lumps. into a can. Yeah, the other lump's going to sit there for a bit. It's not going to be very big. Yeah. In which case, let's shove some more in. Cut the other end off. <laughs> yeah. If it hasn't gone solid yet. Not that much. As you can see, well viewers, this is a very much a backyard cowboy job. <laughs> we're doing it. We're making it up as we go. <laughs> Let, let's clamp that down, shall we? Don't want to try it in the oven? No, let's, let's just clamp, clamp it and see how it goes clamped. Now remember, clamping both sides, putting a bit of pressure on and then pressure on the other side because otherwise bad things happen. Remember, gentle viewer, we're not trying to get a flat top on this, although it would help. All we're nice. doing is compressing it down so it's a solid piece without too many air bubbles. Which we have a few. <laughs> <laughs> it's overflowing! <laughs> We've now filled the tray with bottle tops, which are going into the oven. And hopefully, we'll have as much fun of them as we had with the milk bottles. Okay, so we threw these bottle caps in and they've mol melted down. They look like an awfully nasty, tarry mass of... Yeah, that looks like all sorts of fun. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so first thing that we're doing is we're rolling it or compressing it to try and get rid of some of the air. Because let's face it, this will probably have a fair bit of air pockets in it. Still some, some hard bits. Yeah. 
Just like kneading dough, except that this is hot and black and evil. Like tar. Nasty. Okay, we're now going to pull out this blackened mass of tarry plastic. Gooey stuff. It's all shiny. And hopefully compress it into a can. It's hot. It's very hot. Tip it onto the wood. You don't want to put the hot plastic into the hot metal pan because it will stick to the hot metal. But onto the cold wood it's fine. Okay, so flip the paper out from under it. Okay, probably fold it in half. Give it a little bit of a compress, yep. And let's see if we can stick it into this can. Okay, it's going to need a bit more of a roll to fit in. Ah, gym fix. Gym fix? Okay. <laughs> Sounds a bit like a wolf fix, but with less hammers. <laughs> Now if we just sit it here, it'll rise and rise, so we have to compress it to make sure we get, don't have too many air bubbles. I don't reckon we have too many air bubbles with this one. <laughs> it looks pretty compressed, and I reckon we can get away with a single clamp we'll give it a shot, in the it? middle and uh -huh. yeah, just don't compress it too much because it I don't think it needs it. Well here we are, several hours later. Many hours later, would you say? Yeah, a few hours. A good few hours. We've learned some stuff. <laughs> a couple of coffees later. We've had some laughs. We haven't burned each other, so that's a good thing. Mm, got hot fingers. Well, yeah. And we have one usable billet, which I think is not too bad. It even has a spike where it came up through the middle of the plunger. Mm. So should still be able to turn something with it. Yeah, it should be pretty fun. We've got two other cans that are cooling still and will be for a while because the larger the mass of plastic, the longer it takes to cool. And if you're wondering why this is a blackish color, it's because the gloves we were using, they're not new. And I've been sanding black EVA foam and other stuff and they're grimy and they've got soot on them. Yeah and basically it came off into the plastic. Hopefully, when we do turn it on the lathe, uh, that'll cut away from the top. Hopefully. And hopefully it is just the top, mm. but you were kneading it together yeah. like dough, so yeah. it may be in amongst it as well. Mm. That'd be good for a trial. Yeah. Hey, we may even get a marble effect. Anything's yeah. possible. Yeah. Be able to make a doorknob or a gear knob or something with that or one. Something. Maybe, maybe a pulley. We'll see yeah. how it looks. We'll put our heads together and work out what we're going to... Yep. produce and if we can't think of anything else i'll carve it into a skull because <laughs> you know skulls why not that's what you do that's what i do yeah. so any <clears throat> last thoughts on melting down this plastic no no it's a good technique and we're, we're yep. reusing uh, stuff that would normally get chucked away while recycling well yeah recycled people. or end up in landfill because the recyclers can't recycle it because mm. we can't ship it overseas anymore. Mm. But yeah, basically it's free material, it's milk bottles and soft mm. drink bottle lids. Mm. Not the soft drink bottles, that's a different plastic. Mm. And it'll carve, you can tap it to put screws in, mm. you can drill it, it's not a bad material. It's not super heavy mm. and it's nice and strong. Like a hammerhead. Yes, a mallet mm. would work well. A bigger one. A bigger one. Mm. So anyway, this is Wolf from Army Train and... Jim from uh, Doing Stuff. And we say, stay home and make something and do stuff. <laughs> See you later, eh?